Welcome back again guys. Uh, welcome to another session of NCRT Biology. This is chapter 1 and we are talking about here about taxonomic categories and hierarchy. We have seen that uh, the importance of taxonomy. Taxonomy is a stream of biological science where we identify organisms based on their morphological, structural and physiological characteristics as well as genetic characteristics. We put them into different groups and then we name them you know so uh, naming so identifying an organism naming them and putting them into different group all of this comes down to taxonomy right now once we put them in different groups different groups or categories whatever groups or categories whatever you can say so those category must have a, some common characteristics or some common features so based on their common characteristics we put different organisms in those categories. Now, once we put them in different category, we can build up what is called a hierarchy of this taxonomic classification, right? Hierarchy means it based on some series of events. That means from unit, from unit form till the advanced, advanced form. So, from smaller unit till the large unit that thing is called as the hierarchy of something right so from the smallest foundation to the largest foundation of organizing all those different organisms based on their characteristics in the taxonomic field right now why this arrangement is important you know uh, once we know and identify an organism we name them it's fine we can easily identify them and all these things are fine but the important part is, you know, because they live in, a, in an environment and which is filled with different organisms. So definitely there is some interaction present between the organisms all the time. Now there are interactions between uh, the organism itself, uh, in between themselves, as well as there are interactions between the organism and the environmental factors like temperature, like water, like air, whatever present there, right? And that is called the ecology, right? That's called the eco, ecology, right? That, that part of the biology is called ecology and this thing is called as ecosystem. So ecosystem is something which is dealing with the relationship of the organism between themselves as well as between the environment, right? Because in a turn, everything is linked in this environment, in this, in this you know, world, everything is related, right? So, an organism is interacting with the environment, the environment is interacting with the environment and all these things, right? So, in, in the second part of this taxonomical features, we not only study the classification and identification or characteristics of the organism, but also we study the interaction of those organisms between themselves, right? So, how they interact with themselves. Now, that interaction of organism, so interaction interaction of organism between themselves and the relationship the relationship of those organisms between themselves is termed as you know that part of the study is termed as systematics so it's termed as remember so let me write it here systematics systematics deals with the relationship of all those uh, organisms that are aligned i mean arranged in taxon Okay, so now let's bring it here. So groups, there are different groups of taxonomy. Now groups contain certain common features or common characteristics. So organisms have those characteristics will be put inside those groups. Okay, so those groups. Now the group hierarchy will be organized from the smallest foundation to the largest foundation, right? So let's begin from the smallest foundation till the largest foundation to find out the different arrangement. So if we bring it here or, or let's say let's talk, talk from the largest foundation then come down to the smallest one whatever. So let's do this. Okay. So if we begin with the largest foundation you can see it can, consists of kingdom. So let's cross these two things here. Let's start from kingdom. Right. So let me scroll down a little bit here. Yeah. So let's start from this or this is the first because you know rest of the thing you don't require so this is a very basic diagram and very basic structure for this uh, I mean very basic structure of those uh, 
hierarchy of taxonomy and each of those groups that they are organized like as you can say species genus family order each of those groups are termed as taxon single group are termed as taxon and if you combine all those taxons together they are termed as taxa so taxa is a plural form of taxon okay so if we bring it from the highest organization that's kingdom that's what present in the ncrt books and all these things so let's begin with it so kingdom means it's a huge huge organization huge organization of different organisms as you can see here it consists of you know mammals that you can see a cow is there ant which is a insect is there hen which is a bird is there mollusk is there you know snail then we have snake then uh, then we have a you know, reptile snake is and then we have uh, mammals and then we have everything every different groups are present there right and remember whatever we talk whenever we talk about kingdom and all the species and the kingdom is the largest reservoir of all these things right so the characteristics a particular kingdom share is the, the characteristic difference is very less i mean I mean, sorry so very high that means you know once we talk about different kingdoms like you know kingdoms like animal animal kingdom kingdoms like plant kingdom the difference between the kingdoms are huge huge difference as you can see a difference between a plant and animal it's huge in the characteristics right and, and this is the most variance in the characteristics between an animal and plant and and th that that's called the kingdom because in kingdom varying in kingdom means varying in huge differences between organisms right so begins with here all of them are animals right and you can see the number of individuals over and over 2 million organisms till now now if you break it down a little bit we'll get uh, phylum so from the kingdom we, if you break it down we get phylum and uh, in the phylum as you can see here it's approximately 50000 phylums present now the characteristic features are slightly varied uh, i mean le little less varied than the features of kingdom i mean the features between animal and plant distantly varied but the features between two different phylum is less distantly varied as you can see the difference is here fish bird then you have you know mammals then you have lizard so you can see reptile i mean and then we have a uh, fish then you have bird so you can see the differences right though they have considerable amount of differences but they don't have huge difference like animal and plant kingdom okay so the example of a phylum is chordata and these are all belonging to the chordate chordate means they have a particular you know notochord and what is notochord and all this is we'll be discussing later but chordata is a particular family where they have you know spine in their in them right so they have a proper spine you can say like that after that if you break down phylum we get a class now in class class means the variance between the class in in the feature is less than the variance present in phylum as you can see class is mammalia that means all of them belonging to mammals are called the class you know all the mammals belonging to the same class right so whatever mammals we are dealing with now if we are co comparing between a mammal and a bird you'll get a huge i mean considerable amount of difference that's why we put bird and mammal in two different class okay but all the mammals have considerable amount of similarity that is they have you know mammary glands uh, i mean they have pinna that is uh, present in the ear they have you know diaphragm present in, in inside the physiological uh, body and in, for that reason they belonging to mammalia on the other hand for birds they all have you know wings to fly their first legs converted into wings they have a beak there so you can see in phylum we have all of them together we have fish we have bird we have mammals all together but once we going towards class it becomes only restricted to mammals so mammals is a different class reptiles in a different class fish in different class bird is a different class so as you can see now after that 
if we come down to much smaller range that is the order order means among a particular class there are certain very specific characteristic and the variance in specific characteristic so as we are coming from the kingdom towards the order the characteristic variance becomes thinner so as we are coming down the difference is becoming as you can see thinner right so in order the example is carnivora so among all the mammals as you can see jackal it can be squirrel it can be rabbit it can be fox it can be tiger so among all of them if you're going towards order it is carnivora herbivora herbivora means those mammals who only eat grass and other plant species to live on but carnivora means those who are i mean those are flesh eating like as you can see jaguar as you can see fox hyena bear and so on and you can see as we are going down from the kingdom towards the species the number of individuals that are present is also being less because definitely it will be less and species is the having the least number right so as we are going down here right so this is how it actually works the kingdom consists of huge variety but as we are going towards species the variations is is being reduced into a particular narrow point and that species right so after order we have family so if you break down order now now we are breaking carnivora so as you break down order among those carnivores that are flesh eating or meat eating we have canidae canidae means specific type as you can see all the type of fox are termed inside this canidae right so these are called the family right so you can see you the distinguish or the difference between a particular type of fox and a jaguar is very less because they have a huge degree of similarity they have certain differences in their body structure and some very very ch minute changes in morphological needs but they have profound change in genetic field that's why i've told you previously uh, scientists nowadays uh, categorize all those animals based on their genetic nature more importantly than the physical and morphological scheme so in the canidae we have in all those type of foxes and all these things right and the number is very low now as we break down family we finally get genus and the genus from the canidae we get a canis now the genus means another so very much specific type of individuals so among those fox very specific type of foxes that are put in that genus canis actually all this canis or canidae this this family and genus these things majorly they are divided they are majorly divided based on their you know based on their characteristics of their teeth and how they prey on all these things right so once we look at order we we are gathering a bunch of characteristics together but as you are going towards family and class okay as we going towards family or genus as you can see family or genus the the characteristics that we are looking for the number of characteristics you are looking for becomes very very less right an order is have a considerable amount of differences that is you know bunch of characteristics but as you going towards family and genus the characteristics that that are defining becomes very very less now finally from the genus we have species that is the unit part the point where everything emerges and in the species is a group of individual with only some fundamental similarity some only some fundamental similarities then only put in the species for example lupus is a type of species so lupus i mean they belonging to canis belonging to canidae belonging to carnivora belonging to mammalia then chordata then animalia so you can see 
how systematically we put all these organisms together by having this hierarchy of taxonomy and that's very very important to have this hierarchy of taxonomy right actually it is i give you one i've given you one particular example there but actually there are many examples are present and all of those examples can be taken for account right it's the it's the easiest way to understand the scenario in a whole right so from the kingdom to finally into the species and how we get them right and it, it is true for plant species, insect species, and all the other species. And species is the unit part, right? And the very uh, and the characteristic difference between two species are very very rare. You may not be able to see it, you may not be able to feel it, but you need to examine that organism to finally understand that those belong to different species. But actually, according to the definition of species and speciation. The important thing, the most important thing we need to know is that uh, species means the organisms that are belonging to a single species, they breed with each other. So that is that keep this thing in your mind. So uh, organism that is placed towards species, for example lupus here, they breed with within the same species. So a lupus will breed with another lupus. A lupus will not breed with hyena. And that's the true thing. That's why species are defined. Right? So, an organism, a set of organisms, if they breed between themselves, they're termed as belonging to same species. Because two different species of organisms generally don't breed. Right? So, keep this thing in your mind. And this is called the hierarchy of taxonomy and the relationship of all those individuals with each other is very very important to study and that's called as the systematics. Okay, so that's it guys and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.